Hi, my name is Jill Fredenberg, and this is my project, the Estonia Vlogs. So I'm going to give you a brief introduction of the project. We're going to walk through some of the demographics of some videos that I made, um, or details more than demographics. I'm going to go over the themes that I noticed in the videos and some of the results that I was able to pull from those themes. And then I'll talk a little bit about future research opportunities. So hindsight is 20. 20 is a very common phrase in American culture, but oftentimes hindsight serves to further complicate our relationship with the past. From September of 2017 to May of 2018, I lived in an ethnically mixed but majority Russian city in Estonia called Narva. While in Narva, I documented my experience as an American on a Fulbright scholarship teaching English and media literacy abroad by posting public weekly videos, video blogs or vlogs, to a public YouTube channel. <clears throat> um, Kennedy in 2021 wrote, blogging on YouTube is a process of self-formation whereby a vlogger constructs and presents their identity and relationship with the platform, technology, and all of its participants. And that was definitely something that I experienced even as someone who did not have a lot of viewership. So in total, over that time period that I mentioned, so the time of my Fulbright grant in Narva, Estonia, I made 34 videos. They ranged from five to 20 minutes each, and the titles were often either location-based. So for example, when I visited Lapland, Finland, that would be the title of the video, or activity-specific. So picking mushrooms, for example, foraging in Estonia. Um, again, these were produced from September 2017 to June of 2018, which was the entirety of my grant. Um, and this was not a funded or obligation on the part of the Fulbright grant. We were encouraged to do projects, but I was right out of undergrad and I knew that I wanted to be a filmmaker, which is something that I am studying now at Memphis, in addition to my communication degree. And I wanted to document everything. And at the time, I had a very pure, I guess, idea of documenting things meant via video meant that they were the truest form or the truest depiction of these. Um, knowing, of course, that editing and things like that take away from that that truth, I thought that that would be the best way, um, even better than something like writing down my experiences. So, um, I'm sorry if the audio is picking up my dog chewing on its boy. Um, so some of the themes that I found were solitude overall, not necessarily in a bad way, but just, you know, being by myself, nationality, travel, and intercultural exchange. So the, the things or the, the common recurring either visual themes or themes that I spoke about, uh, that I coded as solitude included weather, hobbies that I likely would not have done had I not been by myself most of the time, especially when the weather got really bad and it started getting dark at 2 or 3 p.m. And in Estonia, people weren't really doing a whole lot of things together, especially during the week. And I lived by myself. Um, and so I picked up hobbies like painting and crafting and doing things that I now that I'm back home in America, I really don't do those things. Um, and I think that that isolation, excuse me, was a big part of that. I went on these really long, very cold walks often. And um, in a couple of vlogs, I actually talked about being homesick and experiencing homesickness. Um, in terms of nat nationality, I went to Narva uh, <laughs> the summer uh, after President Trump got elected. So I, I started my grant about a year um, after the election, um, not quite a year. And so I was constantly answering and asking questions about what my nationality meant to myself. And I had students, my normal students ranged from about 14 to 17, but I visited schools that had little kids and college students. So I was interacting with a really wide range of students and I was constantly talking about these specific terms that I have coded as nationality. So the 2016 election, how it happened, how the electoral college worked in favor of Trump that year, 
um, race and racism in general. Uh, I did a lot of educating about Black Lives Matter, which meant that I had to do a lot of education for myself as well so that I was you know, being true to, to to the movement as best as I could to the ethnically Russian folks in Estonia that didn't have a full grasp of what was going on. Um, I also often was, were, <laughs> I was often, excuse me, discussing um, Russian politics, which now that uh, with Russia's invasion of Ukraine and knowing the way that my students felt about Russia versus the way that their parents and grandparents felt um, and, and the, the separation of those things, um, it just makes those memories very interesting. And then I actually answered the most questions about how accurate television and films were, um, how, how much of American television and movies were true to the American experience because that's how most of my students knew America. Um, a majority of the the vlogs also just documented travel. I was able to go to a, a lot of the Baltic states, uh, guest lecturing, um, as well as Finland and Poland. And then at one point I had to return home. Um, my grandpa died while I was on my Fulbright and that sucked, but um, I did have an excuse <laughs> to go home, which was great um, because I was feeling a lot of that homesickness. And so it, it was a reason to see family. Um, and then intercultural exchange in general, which I had a certain idea of what that meant going into the grants, but then coming out of it, I understood it completely differently. So I went in there to teach English, but I realized that a whole lot of what I was teaching was American culture and that, and the way that Americans often get raised with this capitalistic idea of ambition. And if you are not monetizing all of the things that you love doing, then what are you doing with yourself? Um, <laughs> as well as work and leisure and the way that all of those things were very, very different while I was abroad. And so in these vlogs, they started very, not scripted in, in what I was doing, but I would take footage and then I would look at all of the footage and edit it together. And then I would write this sort of monologue that I would read over the videos. And as time went on, I think by video seven or eight, I stopped doing that. And it was more of the traditional vlog that you see today on YouTube, where it's just someone talking to a camera and then documenting experiences and not necessarily making them have to mean something specific or turning them into something poetic by reading some scripted thing over them. Um, and in those more vloggy style videos, I, I began really sharing uh, the cultural differences that I was noticing and what I wanted to keep and what I wanted to, to leave behind in Estonia when I left. Um, a popular uh, Estonian proverb is he who seeks shall find. Um, I think that there are versions of this all over the place, but I really liked this because I think on the surface, Estonia does seem very cold and dark. And uh, I was in a part of the country where there wasn't a whole lot going on all of the time, but I was able to form some really strong bonds um, and make really lasting relationships there because I was seeking out experiences within the country that was about its natural beauty as well as its historical value um, and really being curious and asking people about their culture. I wasn't perfect at this, of course. Um, there's a lot that I would change going back, but I think that having re just rewatched all of these videos from five years ago, I'm seeing how much I was kind of wide-eyed and um, it makes everything happening politically there. Um, it was already going to mean a lot, but it, it means more, of course, having personal ties to the, the people and, and the physical place. <clears throat> um, so interestingly enough, I realized in my reflection in this project that, um, there is a quantitative element to it. Again, this is a small channel. I did not get that many views, um, but I was interested in looking at the popular versus what I remember, right? Because the the overlying or oh, blah, 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 overarching, excuse me, idea behind this project is, is memory um, versus popularity. And so these were my most popular videos. You can see that they all hit around a thousand views. Um, 
and I think some it has to do with the exclamation point or the time that I posted. I'm not totally sure. Um, but I, if you had asked me about these videos, these would have been some of the ones that I would have mentioned last. I think Poland would have come up. Um, but the, this first week in Estonia and this Estonia apartment tour, I don't even remember filming these <laughs> when I was watching them back. Um, whereas these are the ones that are most personally important to me. And you can see they have less than half of the amount of viewership. Um, I really loved Lapland. That is the most visceral experience I had on this trip as well as the mushroom picking. So things that are very um, active and physically engaging and also very aesthetically pleasing. I think that artistically, those are some of my be best videos. Um, and then of course, the last week in Estonia video really sticks out in my mind because it was the one that I made technically the most recently, although these are all um, four or five years ago now. And I just think that that's, that's interesting that the ones that got the most views were not necessarily the ones that stick out the most in my brain. Um, so here were some of my findings. Um, again, this is kind of preliminary research. I watched them all again, um, but I need to, to I think, a little bit more thoroughly think about how I want to be coding these things and what all of this actually means. But I think um, some of my takeaways can be broken up into these two categories. So intercultural communication and personal. Um, the lens of memory within the context of Eastern Europe's current political turmoil. I am in a very privileged position being American, but because I have no familial ties to um, to Ukraine or to that entire area, my one sort of experience that connects me, that links me to that area is my time in Estonia. Um, and I think that that lens of memory that I have shapes the way that I view the current political situation there. Um, there are also a lot of affordances and limitations of taking part in a cultural, in a culture, excuse me, temporarily. I was only there for nine months um, and it took me a good three, four months just to get adjusted. So when you think about it, I was really only mentally there fully for five months. Um, and there are definitely certain assumptions that drive governmental program fund, like programmatic funding to intercultural communication. What they specifically want you to be teaching might not be what you end up teaching. So for example, I was not prepped by Fulbright to talk about race and racism. I was not prepped to have to explain how Trump was elected. Um, those are things that came up naturally and over and over again that I was not prepped for by Fulbright. Um, and then personally, just the, this idea of authenticity of memory, I think watching these vlogs back was a really healthy practice in, in knowing um, just that the brain isn't perfect. Um, there was definitely a public construction of the self. I could I could see myself holding back when I wanted to say certain things and I could see myself really considering how I was going to say things similar to how I'm doing it right now in this presentation because it's recorded. So this lives forever on the internet. Um, and and it's it would be ridiculous to pretend like I was not aware of that at the time. Um, and so that does impact things. Um, and then just this idea of the popular versus the personal, I'm very interested in studying social media groups, but also content creators as part of my dissertation. And I think that this idea of the personal becoming the popular and vice versa um, is an idea that I'll continue playing with. So if you have any ideas for people I should read, or if you know anyone doing similar research, please feel free to leave a comment and let me know. Um, future research, I think that YouTube and other video first platforms are archival opportunities for democratized narrative practices and we can pick at them as much as we want, but people are always going to be um, trying to broadcast their lives now um, because it's fun. Like at baseline level, it's a fun thing to do. It is an art practice, um, even for the most casual folks doing it. And so I think that we need to take it seriously and, and we need to be studying it and what it means. <clears throat> um, so that was my presentation. Uh, I'm so sorry, I've been, I'm a little breathy. <laughs> um, I think I'm just excited about this and it's a big question mark because I don't know exactly where it's going to go. Um, and revisiting something from five years ago is really wild. Um, this is also my first dip into autoethnography. I don't know how much of it I'm going to continue to do, but I really have enjoyed this and I'm looking forward to seeing all of the other presentations and I'm learning a lot. Um, so all of my contact information is on the screen. Please feel free to email me. Uh, I would be so excited to talk to everyone. Thank you.